OK, fluid machines. Now, fluid machines is all about finding the operating point of the system. OK? Generally, fluid machines, you're dealing with a pump, or you're dealing with an actuator, or a motor, or any sort of device where you can extract flow from a fluid, or give, um, you can extract energy from a fluid, or you can give energy to a fluid. Okay? We often deal with just pumps, where you're extracting energy from the fluid to drive uh, a system okay, of some description. And whenever you've got a pump, there'll be a characteristic associated with that pump. And the characteristic will be to do with this line. You've got pressurised due to the pump. And down here, you've got the flow rate. This thing's nailed. You've got V dot, OK? Pressure drives due to the pump. And you'll have a line that's associated with the, with the pump, OK? And that um, generally, you increase the speed of the pump, and you end up getting a slightly different line, OK? And at one end, you've got a high, low flow rate, but you've got a high pressure rise. And at the other end, we've got a high flow rate and a low pressure rise. And the type of pump will change the type of line. For example, if you've got a centrifugal pump, it will generally be down this end, OK? If you've got a positive displacement pump, like a piston pump or a gear pump, who would be up the high end, OK? You get a lower flow rate, but you get a high pressure rise, OK? And so the pump characteristic, these lines, they'll be associated with a pump that you're dealing with. And each of those lines has the form of A1, which is some constant, OK? Minus A2, which is another constant, OK, times by V dot squared, OK? So this is the, the form of a pump characteristic, OK? A1 being, the, obviously, the intercept and the, the delta P axis, OK? And A2 will change how wide that V squared line is, OK? It's a standard quadratic equation, OK? So V squared, obviously, that indicates that we're dealing with a parabola, OK? That's obviously basic mass, OK, so that's the pump characteristic. A1 and A2 are specifics to the pump, and you'll generally be given them, OK? Sometimes it's given as head, sometimes it's given as pressure, but you'll be given those values, OK, generally. Well, unless you've got to work it out, OK? And in which case, um, you may be given a, a bunch of data points, OK? And you've got to work out what those values are. OK, fluid machines, when you've, got a, you've got obviously got a pump in the system, you also have a pipe in the system. And so um, there's going to be a pipe characteristic. Now, here's an example. We've got Bernoulli's equation here. OK, there's, um, I've called them A and B in this case. One and two is the same thing. OK, and I've said that A and B are reservoirs. So what do we know about reservoirs? C1 and C2 is zero. OK, yep, so C A and C B are zero. OK. But we don't know that they're open or closed, so we've got to assume there's still static pressures, PA and PB. And so what I've done is I've rearranged the equation. I've taken out the dynamic pressures, OK? And so I've still got the PA term. I've still got this PA term, OK, and the PB term. I've got my hydrostatic pressures, ZA and ZB, OK? And I've got my pressure rise due to the pump and the pressure loss due to the pipe system, OK, due to friction and minor losses. OK, so I can rearrange this equation, grouping the static pressures on one side and the hydrostatic pressures on one side. OK, so there's my PB minus PA and ZB minus ZA. OK, notice that the difference in elevation is going to be the height difference. OK, so we can often replace that with H, which is what I've done here. OK, and the difference in static pressures, obviously, if they're open reservoirs, the difference in static pressures is zero. So we can neglect that term. OK, but we don't know that in this situation. So we've assumed that they're still there. And so the pressure loss, this is excluding minor losses, OK, is obviously going to be this term, which we covered before. And again, replacing C with V dot over A, we end up with this form, OK? 8 FL rho upon pi squared d to the 5 times by V dot squared. Now, we've got a V dot squared term here, OK? So what we can do is we can substitute that into this equation, OK? And notice we've now got two parts of the equation, that's a static lift, so that will happen no matter what's going on, in the, whether there's flow or not, OK? It's not dependent on flow rate. And then you've got this term here, which does depend on flow rate, OK? There's a V dot squared term. And so we can rewrite that equation. That's going to be a constant of some description. And if the friction factor is constant, then this term is going to be a constant. And so the pipe characteristic comes out to be C1 plus C2 times V dot squared. OK, so we've got a pump characteristic, 
which is the A terms. We've got a pipe characteristic, which are the C terms, okay? And you can match them together. We've got two equations for delta PP, A1 minus A2 V dot squared. Pipe characteristic, you've got C1 plus C2 V dot squared. You put them together, you end up with this equation, okay? So this is due to the pipe. This is due to the, sorry, this is due to the pipe. This is due to the pump, okay? Two equations. We we'll know what A1 and A2 are. We'll know what C1 and C2 are because you've worked it out in the problem. And then you can go through and solve for V dot squared. One equation, one unknown, okay? You group those terms on one side, those terms on the other side, and you can then solve for V dot squared. So that's fluid machines in a, in a nutshell, okay? That equation you should be able to remember, okay? 